one bank right, and that's a bum because yeah. Okay. And then three bank, which would probably also be a bum. So that's a good start. <laughs> Actually, I never put whisper that close. Usually. Ah, okay. I think so you knew what you were doing, and you. No, no, that uh, was the way to bump it. <laughs> that's, that's actually I uh, I put Flexler to give me the option of doing that. Yeah. But uh, but usually Whisper is farther away, so I can just run him. Uh, okay, we're back with I round five. Let me get um, the timer running. A really unconventional deployment there from Nicola. <sighs> These tables and cameras move too easily. The tables move way too easily. This is everything just gets twisted straight away. Alex doing uh, very well with uh, this list for a while now. Let's make sure we get onto chat. So, yep, thank you for joining us. We've got two more rounds just left to play at the French National Championship for 2018. Uh, here we're seeing uh, the reigning French champion, Nicolas Durand, uh, face off against the voice of UK X-Wing, which is what it says on his list, not what I'm saying myself. We can thank Cormac Higgins for that. The voice of UK X-Wing, Alex Burt. List on the screen, we've got Nicolas, we're playing Rex Labraff, Duke. How did he get? Huh? Is that a mistake? <laughs> Does that thing have that from any shields? New squad. Extended Empire, Airship, Defender, Rex Labraff. Right hand side. Force? Wow! Free health, four shields on the Defender. I don't think I'd seen one before. Um, Whisper with Duke and Darth Vader. And the Scarif base pilot. Not quite sure what he's hoping to do with that. Um, coordinate a few actions, I guess. Uh, and on Alex's side of the table, the, the point heavy list. Of red line, trajectory simulator, proton torpedoes, proton bombs, seismic charges, and ablative plating. Uh, Death rain is marked by a blue base marker. Uh, trajectory simulator, proton torpedoes, proton bombs, seismic charges, and whisper with Darth Vader and Duke, becoming very sim uh, a very symbolic, very typical uh, loadout now. Let me get this. Uh, uh, But yeah, Death Rain has a blue target lock and a blue uh, base marker. And that's how we tell them apart. So yeah, interesting lineup uh, on Nicolas's side of the table. Nicolas is, uh, uh, we saw Nicolas play not only last year in the French National Championship final, but also in we saw him play the last round of the hyperspace qualifier at the Bologna system open on the stream, where he the cloaks to the left, right, where he uh, he won his Coruscant invite. No, no, no. I think he he failed there. He got knocked out with the um, Firestorm special, and then went on to uh, make top eight at the French System Open to be able to get a Coruscant invite. 
Let me take. Okay, and and I will point out to people. Um, yes, there's been a lot of Imperials today. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I don't have proper statistics today. Uh, the list collection wasn't as effective as we'd hoped. Um, I'm not 100% sure that the uh, that it's indicative of the whole tournament. But from what I'm hearing, yes, it is a lot of Imperials here today. Uh, they've kind of teched against scum and uh, the, the Imperials have, have come out more favorable. Let me get the, what's I gonna do? I have my phone out for a reason. And there's a very um, generous cut at this tournament. We're uh, we're dealing with um, a top 32 from 166 players, and they eliminated everybody with um, one win or less at, on after round three, meaning that a third, no, close to half the field got wiped out, uh, giving us a really healthy cut for players that are still in the play. So obviously you won't you're not really hearing too much I guess maybe for the language difference uh, then they're not very chatty uh, but um, Alex is known as being the host the primary host of the 186 squadron podcast and I've already told Alex from a, from a good a good while ago that I wanted to try and get him on the stream it'd been kind of like uh, furtive that I'd never really been able to get him on before um, there was one time at the Tatooine system open 2017. Yeah, 2017. That uh, I almost had him on against Agata Pukulska, who is probably playing today in Poland. Uh, and and then they had, there was a repairing, and so I had to pick somebody else, and uh, that I, I lost uh, my pairing of Alex against Agata. And then um, I managed to get Agata again on later on against OJ Hemmings, but uh, wasn't able to get back to Alex at any point. And then eventually he went on to get make the what was it top top eight at the World Championships in May, I believe. Hmm. So, Rexlow opens fire on Death Rain, gets one hit, one hit, and a focus. They decide it's not cocked. Focuses for three hits, and Death Rain rolls a blank, so takes all of his shields. And from the two hits, he rolls, focuses for an evade from Death Ray. Now, does Red Line have? That would have been Red Line firing, wouldn't it, if, it, if Red Line's got range? So now it's a question of is Death Ray going to fire? What happened to the dude who said he was going to help me commentate? It's probably gone. Do you know what this always happens? People always turn around and say, oh, I've been knocked out, so I'll come commentate with you. And then I go find them, and they're playing Hangar Bay. It's like, oh, no, I'm playing Hangar Bay now. So, yeah, we'll switch over to player camera while they're on the dials. Um, you will be noticing a slight strobing effect on the camera. Nothing I can do to really help that right now. I'm going to see if maybe I can fix it by tomorrow. But... Um, yeah, I believe it's got something to do with the lighting conditions. Uh, not that the lighting conditions are poor. You can see that we've got some excellent spotlights, but the actual lights used seem to have seem to um, flicker at a certain frequency that just causes that on the camera. The actual table camera had the same thing when I first set up, but it, um, once we got the spotlights on, that flickering disappeared from the table camera.
Axel in the background putting on his French electronica music. I oh, know he's picking it up, his French electronica music. It was funny when I first met Axel. <laughs> Axel is like the the most because I've, I've only been to France once before coming for the first national tournament that I did here and then you meet Axel and it's like oh my god this is exactly what people tell you French people are like <laughs> they dress slightly strange they're very eccentric and they listen to electronic music voyage voyage he's amazing <clears throat> So here we go, Death Rain dropping a bomb, dropping a proton bomb. Hmm. Must be expecting the 4K from Erexla. And Whisper decloaking left. That's what I was wanting to do. And Redline launches a seismic, making sure that he's got uh, Rexler pretty much blocked off anyway he wants to go. That table just moved. So if Rexler wants to turn or bank to the left to port, then uh, he's going to take the seismic damage from the, from the asteroids. And if he wants to take the 4K, then he's going to take the proton, top, proton bomb. And whisper the cloaks to starboard. Base pilot moves up to into range to coordinate with Rexler. Hmm. He could maybe try and barrel roll. Rexler to starboard to try and make sure the 4K is just a little bit further away from that proton bomb. See if he can just make it out of range. Boosts him. Boosts him forward. Okay. Interesting. So maybe he's got a bank to the port in the dial, giving him a chance to get out of range of that asteroid. Also blocks Death Rain, well fought out. It looks like Death Rain might just be in range of that proton bomb as well. But this red line's got the ablative plating. And red line target locks on Rex LeBraff. Whisper creeps along on the board edge for Alex, so obviously quite trying to hold him back until um, he can really take advantage of that high capacity primary. That table is moving more and more every time. Two forward from Nicolas. On the whisper.
focus evade tokens. And I think the, because the cloak is face down, that means he's not cloaked. Yeah, so Rex does the 4K and puts himself right on top of that proton bomb. Not going to be a problem for Rex, though. He's got those four shields. Uh, but Death Rain, on the other hand, is open to crit damage now. Red Lion's got the ablative plating, so he, this shouldn't be a problem for him. So let's see if um, if Nicola can get lucky uh, with uh, a powerful crit on Death Rain. Assuming he's in range. I mean, it's a close one. It's a base and a half. Plus... Bump, so it would have to be... There's a two... Yeah. I think that's a no. No, he didn't take the damage from the bomb, just out of range. Alright, they're gonna no, they're gonna mark him now. Let's have a look. So from that way it looked like that yes, Death Rain does take a face up damage card. Okay, so there it goes, and it's a disabled power regulator. Rexa loses a shield, Death Rain gets a face up damage card, disabled power regulator. Did it do it? Okay. So he's going to get an eye. He's going to be eye on. He's going to have one eye on. What's the rule for medium based ships with ions? Seismic charge detonates the asteroid, clearing up the field a bit a little. So, there's like two crits and maybe a hit. Well, blank, blank, blank. Loses shields. And he's discussing whether to spend the evade. Spends the evade. A red line fires. No, no, whisper, whisper is out of range. Rexler firing on. <laughs> on Defrin, I think. He's got one cock die, he's got two focuses, he's got a crit, he's got a blank. Doesn't have a focus, just gets one crit. And rolls the evade, so no damage. So that match, that engagement couldn't have gone better for Alex. And he's still got the opportunity to attack the Scarif base pilot. Uh, blank, blank. Two, two focuses on a hit, two evades. <laughs> and they go back to dials. Yeah, so like I said, I was saying before, it's a pretty bad uh, engagement there for Nicholas. Worked out heavily in Alex's favour, uh, getting some good rolls on the dice on Alex's side of the table and some bad rolls on Nicholas's side. Oh, I should have 
Right now, um, Alex just wants to keep pushing forwards with Death Rain and Redline and take advantage of their arcs on the Whisper, or maybe in the Scarif base player if he wants to try and mess things around for them, um, giving them an opportunity to just just sink some damage on the remainder of uh, Nicolas' list, whilst uh, Whisper takes care of Rexler. Good, it's good, it's good, it's good. What do I know? How do I do this? Uh, I go here. Deathlane launches a side bit child, this is not working for me. Thank 
Okay. Deferent again, but um, Whisper is in a situation now, or rather, I should say, Nicolas Whisper is in a situation now where he's going to be facing down two proton torpedo attacks. Bottled it with, uh, with with having whisper chasing him. Cool. So moving on, whisper. One banks in, staying within that arc. I mean, obviously he's managed to remove the target lock with the jam from the Scarif base pilot. So. The torpedoes aren't such a problem now. But, yeah, well, two dice, but yeah, okay. Um, even so. I mean, the problem is you've got Whisper, you've got Alex's Whisper chasing down Rexler. And Defrain take a damage. Give me Nicolas the first points of the match. Nicolas. I put the template and I was like, I will better the focus. And then I remember that you can choose not to. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> Death Rain takes the damage for Vader. Okay. Should he not have flipped the disabled power regulator? After you execute a maneuver, does it not count that he bumped? To evade, no damage there. Red line fires a proton torpedo at Whisper. Looks like one, two crits and a blank re rolls to get another blank. It's a focus. So it looks like I've got, he's got one and two crits. Takes one, gets one evade. And spend an evade to block one more. Two shields on Whisper. Uh, my turn. Uh, 
Two shields on red line. And they go back to the house. Interesting. So last two rounds to go now, uh, and let's take a look at the rankings before we started round this round. Uh, after round four, uh, Alain Lullier in first place, uh, four wins, 13, 1,545 MOV out of a possible 1,600. Bar Ariel Barnes we saw in the last game, Alexander Burt we're seeing now, Loen Dussat, uh, also undefeated, Lukas Bolak. Uh, Maxime Almez, uh, Francois David Kisnel, where's uh, Nicolas, ninth place? So we're, we're looking at third place against ninth place. Francois, we saw uh, in round one, has uh, been continuing to win up until the last round, where he's got knocked down to third to 11th place with three victory points. Adrian Coquet. Miguel Angel Celaverdejo. Is he still playing or has he dropped to go play Imperial Sword? I can still drop one for Nile now, can I? So I can still drop the launch where to climb Nile, right? <laughs> I need to see the damage deck because I was under the impression that the same power regulator was after you executing the maneuver. I didn't realise it had to be an eye on the maneuver. Or at least that's what my cheat sheet says anyway. Which I, I should have copied straight off the card. Repair this card. After you execute a maneuver, repair this card. Before you engage, gain one iron token. After you execute a maneuver, gain repair this card. I don't know.
So not much to really comment right now. It's pretty straightforward. He's, he's in a situation where the Punishers are probably going to K-turn here. Uh, I can't see it, them getting them continuing to advance on Whisper this turn. Or uh, I should say, I don't see Nicola allowing him to continue to advance on Whisper. Um, maybe Alex's Whisper will be ready to change target rather than trying to pursue Rex Labraff across the table and make sure he's got all of his concentrated fire on Whisper on Nicolas Whisper missing a dial on death rain on Alex's death rain it's the only dial missing because they've all got like these dial upgrade kits so they're all pretty much the same I guess I did I missed that mobile eye on, on my damage data. Okay. Uh, so I'll drop a seismic charge once it's not gonna hit anything, so should I just not put it down and take the action? No so he was gonna drop a bomb but there's um, no seismic there's no there's no asteroids nearby so there's no point in, in keeping it there. Uh, but he gets the free action and barrel rolls to the to port. His irons is going to do a one straight. Whisper is going to decloak support as well, which I found to be a bit more surprising. halfway through the game and the only points we've got on the board so far are half points from Death Rain. Scarif pilot bumps into red line. Uh, 
thought at first it was going to be a quick game. There was going to be there was going to be a bit of smashing going on with the torpedoes and stuff, but um, especially with how quickly uh, Nicola put damage onto Death Rain, but then it's become a lot slower. And the maneuver on Scarif base pilot's dial was to free bank to starboard, but. I don't know. Let's wait and see, because, I mean, Redland can do a 4K turn. Well, there's still a big question about what Whispers, what direction Whisper's going to go. Will he continue to pursue Rexler? Will he decide to engage Whisper with the rest of Alex's squadron? Okay. Well, I didn't expect that from the red line. So I guess kind of like decided to chase down wrestler now. Yeah. Okay. That was not to be expected. I guess um, it, it was kind of going to be hard to pin down wh Whisper, uh, Nicolas Whisper at this point because be, being so squirrely. But uh, okay, let's see if it if this works out. Um, Whisper goes for straight. Is it? bumps into the back of red line and Rexler free turns right just made it into range one. So red line is the shield from the Vader. Uh, red line shoots red one. Yeah. Red line, Alex's red line firing on Rexler Braff. Gets one, two, three hits and Rexler rolls. Focus, focus, blank. Looks like he's taking three hits because focus, he's, he's been the Vader token, I take two. It's me, player. Oh, Jesus. The side uh, event. Ah, 
just one. You spend your evade, right? Yes. Mm. So I got three hits. You took one shield, one hit. I knew that was going to happen because he didn't put his deck. He didn't put his deck away. And he made a mistake. He put two on when it was actually one. Oh. Okay. Back to Dahls, right? Okay. Some interest in that top 32. Ruben Creo from Spain in 18th place. Uh, Phil GC, Phil Gresham Cook, 16th place, doing very well, uh, along with Alex. But let's see, Phil GC just made it into um, the top of the Nerf Herder two weeks ago because thanks to a very powerful MOV, after having had two losses, there's only one one player with two losses made it through. Um, a very wide cut tomorrow. Top 32 out of 166 players means that one in every five players is going to be making it through to tomorrow. Approximately. They um, After round three, they cut everybody that was on one victory or less. I'd say thank you very much for everyone for joining us today. You've got plenty of X-Wing choice this weekend with the Polish System Open Series and the Australian Nationals will surely be kicking off again re shortly. Um, thank you all for, uh, for watching us. And please do remember, uh, this coverage is brought to you thanks to the support I receive over on Patreon. So please do go over to patreon.com forward slash first earth and consider giving us a little bit of extra money uh, to help manage to do so many tournaments we're probably not going to have any for December because nothing's been announced uh, well there's um, a Belgian national uh, but uh, I think it's on like the 22nd of December so it's like a really difficult date to do but then in the new year I believe we're going to have some more system open events across Europe and I'd like to get to as many of those as possible so please do consider in giving us uh, a a little bit of a hand there on Patreon or alternatively if you've got Amazon Prime there's those Twitch Prime subscriptions as well you can drop us uh, and they're always appreciated Death Drain drops, drops a proton bomb. I mean, you all heard that anyway, so. Okay. And get focus. Focuses for his action. Interesting positioning here. Um, probably going to take a turn. Whisper D close to starboard. Nicolas whispered the cloaks to port.
Okay. So Scarif. He's doing uh, L1 and one half of the foot. And last game he did, but like barely. So <laughs> this game I'm like, uh, I'm not trying it. I think he could have done that. Uh, and then, uh, a signal. A signal, wow, okay. Cool. Okay, so hmm. still probably going to be out of range for this ra this round of combat. Two turn to the to starboard by Death Rain. And target locks Rexler. Then what is that? Uh, a four straight four K turn by. Red line. Hmm. Might be in range one of that bomb. He's also lost shields now. plating and red line so that's not going to do any damage if the bomb is in range whisper moving out of range of the bomb and we're going to see what Rexler's going to do Well done, Alexei. I mentioned the block, Nicolas Whisper. Although we've got very few arcs from Alexei at the table affected this round. Um, this game's really close. It's hard to say exactly who's winning and which one's really getting uh, any advantage out of the situation. Uh, Nicola is... Uh, I feel like Alex is getting better table presence. He's managing to position slightly better than Nicola. But for now, Alex hasn't been able to capitalize that positioning with um, effective damage output. The last ablative charge. It looks like he might just be in range of Whisper. I thought it was out, but um, Takes a shield on Whisper as well. That's a fuel loop. Hmm. So red line onto Rexler will hopefully get that last damage through. If he doesn't. It means that he's got to spend a whole other turn uh, positioning just to try and stop Rexler from getting back into the fight. And it's interesting the use of the Scarif base pilot by Nicola to 
And it's kind of crazy. You look at he's got Rexler and he's got Whisper, and yet on the other side of the table you've got Whisper, Redline, and Death Rain. And you're like, well, what's the Scarif bass player that brings to the table? They coordinate the jam, and, and pretty much that's it. And that's the last shield off of Whisper, thanks to Vader. Uh, right, Redline's already spent all his proton torpedoes, so it's going to be a primary. Range 2, 2 dies, hit and crit. Rexler rolls. Gets two evades. Stays on the board for one more turn. And that's uh, that's bad for Alex more than anything because it just means his next round he's got to be thinking about positioning and trying to hunt down Rexler and not letting him get back involved in the combat. Um, and I think that's it, right? Because nobody else has got arc. They go back to dials, I think. Nicolas seems to be looking at something. Like uh, okay, his whisper can fire on red death rain. So I think he's firing on death red line. Uh, one two. Doesn't, doesn't get the focus. Two blanks. Two damage, but on which one? Two. Yeah, red line, red line. Fire some red line to get some, a couple of extra points. Okay. As time's running down, there's only 15 minutes left in the game. He needs to try and capitalize on points. Uh, and he's not far enough ahead at the time, at this time, to be able to protect himself if he loses Rexler. Lots of confusion with the tiles here. You the only one using this. And I will spend. Yeah. And I will. Interesting match, though, really. It is, uh, I mean, apart from like, the long thinking phases where they've kind of like been having to think about and debate what they're going to do, um, it's been an interesting matchup, and that's something that's considering we're seeing a lot of Imperials today. So now he's got to think about Rex Abraf for one more turn. And uh, yeah, Rex Abraf is pro proving to be an uh, absolute pain in the ass for Alex. Um, not being able to get him off the table quick enough at any point of the game. It looked like it was going to be pretty easy to begin with. But yeah, things have just kind of like stacked up against him. Uh, where, from where Redline is right now, his bombs aren't even really giving me much good to him. I mean, he's got. Let's, let's just quickly update this overlay. He's, he's obviously run out of charges on a lot of things. He's got. Um, He's lost ablative plating and proton torpedoes on red line. Come on. He's still got both types of bombs on red line. He's lost seismic charges and proton bombs on death rain, but he's still got proton torpedoes on death rain. Merci beaucoup.
Okay. So he needs to... Yeah, it's a really terrible situation to be in for Alex right now because he's got a... He's not in a favourable position to be able to chase down Rexler with Whisper or Death Ray. It's pretty much only Redline, and Redline's got no torpedoes left. Um, <clears throat> and Rexler just wants to stay alive, so probably going to just take um, short manoeuvres. Want to try and stay out of the way of uh, Whisper and Death Ray. Also, I'd like to mention quickly, um, when Alex came to the table, he said, oh, I've got to change my bases. I said, yes. He said, do you have, and he turns them over and he goes, oh, you do have grips. That's right. I've got those Escapade Gaming grips. Uh, they sent me some courtesy uh, grips, which I started doing about two years ago um, when uh, the European Championship 2017. Uh, because I got tired of people complaining they weren't going to use my bases because <laughs> they didn't have grips on them. And Escapade sent me some of their grips uh, in first edition, and now I've got the medium base ones as well. And I'd have to say they're like the, the best possible. It's not to say that like you can't find something that's just as good, but perfectly cut, adhesive backing. You just literally take them out of the packet, and in seconds you've got them on there. And now they've managed to fix that shipping problem, so now it's a lot cheaper to buy from Escapade Gaming those grips and ship all over the world I think there's like three, three euros fifty for worldwide shipping and they, they, they come in a pretty uh, pretty ample pack as well there's like um, in the standard bases in the standard pack you get like four you get like nine small bases I think and uh, three big bases maybe that might have been like they might have changed that. That, would, that would, might have been what it was like when uh, a few years ago when I first got them. But um, yeah, you get plenty, uh, so you can get your tournament list pretty much up and running pretty easily. And they do they, they do a really good job. It's like I say, a lot of people turn around and say, "Yeah, I just use this stuff from such and such store and just stick it on. It's fine." And I've always been I've always been a total klutz with anything kind of handy, especially cutting something straight lines and stuff like that. I just never seem to be able to do it right. And um, it was just it's just these are so, so easy. Just get a packet, open them up, stick them on the bottom of the base, and they've even got a little bit of give as well. So even even if you've not lined it up perfectly, there's still plenty. It still works well enough. And it gives you a proper footprint on the on the play map and makes those ships very difficult to move. And at the rate things are going, this is probably going to be the last round. Because I can't see them getting through this round in less than eight minutes. I don't know. The, 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 it's, not, it's not to complain, but they, 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 they've been pretty slow about most of this, especially Nicola, uh, which is in there, right? They can do that. There's no problem there. But it just means that obviously there's been uh, very few uh, engagement rounds in this game, and that's kind of telling by the amount of, about how much damage has actually been put on the board when you've got ships like Death Ray and Red Line and the Scarif Base Pilot. The Scarif Base Pilot in any other game would have a lot more damage on it, and obviously it's not been a target priority for Alex, but still. Whisper. Hmm. Okay. Interesting change. Where's so yeah, Rex Lebraff, ha two a free turn to port. 
Um, uh, leaves him in arc of death rain. Maybe he can try and pilot skill kill death rain off the table. With a range one attack. Whisper bumps into red line. So it looks like uh, Alex has got Ark on uh, Rexler with Whisper as well. Or maybe not. No, I don't think he does. I don't think he does have Ark on, on, on Rexler. So it's going to be what he does have with red line. The red line's like two dice. It's This is going to be interesting because you're going to have Scarif base pilot firing as well on any on either. Whisper's going to try for Scarif. Yeah, well he's, he's got no other option. He's not got arc on, on the other two. He's just going to have to fire on the Scarif base pilot, and we're looking at. Looks like a hit. It's a crit. Reroll to the target lock. He managed to knock the crit off with a focus. So just one crit. Scarif base pilot rolls a focus. Takes damage. He's not got anything to modify. Oh, he had an evade token? Oh, is it Whisper? Huh? No. Uh, uh, Nothing on the roll. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Rexler, range one on death rain, gets two hits, spends a focus to get three. Death Rain rolls one dice. He's got to get pain. He gets it. So only two damage. No crits there. Down to one hit point. And with the Juki. And then Rexler uses his ability to flip one and gets. Uh, weapons disable power regulator again. <laughs> Ooh. Three and a crit. Looks like a blank to me. Two, three, and the face up is a fuel leak. Red line down. Bad turn of events there. Uh, a god shot like that um, from uh, Nicolas Whisper. Got Ark, Death Rain's got Ark on Rex though. Rex though wasn't able to take him off the table beforehand. And so he rolls one hit, one crit. Target lock gets spent for another three hits. Rex though gets focus. He yeah, he's off the table either way. There was a panicked stun pilot in amongst those cards. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. You want your email? <laughs> Scarif attacking Whisper at range 3. <laughs> we'll try, you know, why not? Uh, two hits and a blank. <laughs> and he gets a focus. Yeah, spends nothing to worry about there. Uh, spends a force. Uh, meaning that Alex has a total of four hit points left on the table. Uh, Nicola's big gun is Whisper. And he's at one hit point of losing half points on him. Uh, but yeah, with Death Rain on one hit point as well. It's um, It looks like it's in Nicolas' favour. Um, um, I'd have to go back and check the recording to find out what time that little bell sounded to make uh, from my timer to tell them that their match was over. But um, I thought they weren't going to make another round out of it. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. quick about it guys <laughs> and we have to change the sound on that alarm as well to be a lot louder and a lot, lot well it doesn't get any louder but make a longer sound it's too easy to miss it's going to end up sounding ridiculous on the stream when it goes off and it goes... <laughs> 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 That's yours? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm moving first. Well, so I guess I'll just check it. Yeah, see. Yeah. We will... Uh, yeah. Okay, so... Arif? Coordinate. Oh, Nicola. Here you go. Like whisper bumps. Oh, but that's good for Nicola. Uh, he's out of arc of both of Alex's ships. Scarif base is the only person getting shot this round and he needs to take quite a bit of damage to get half points off of Scarif base pilot. And the question is... Vader's death rain off the table, giving him just one target left to fire on. So Whisper fires on Scarif base pilot. 
free. I can't see anything from those dice. So it was just it was just one blank. Spends the evade. Now Nicolas Whisper returns fire on Alex's Whisper. Rolls gets pretty good dice. Two hits. One hit. Two crits. One evade. Dukes one. Spends a force and gets a stunned pilot. Uh, wrong weeper, wrong, wrong whisper. There we go. Uh, <laughs> two hits. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if that means he's telling it. He's telling it's game over. He's got nothing. He, he didn't roll his dice. Felicitations, Nicolas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you had a very good game there. It was a yeah. bit in the middle. It was a bit kind of like to and fro. It yeah. wasn't really very favorable for either of you. And um, I think that uh, Alex had better positioning and better table presence, but uh, it just kind of seemed like eventually you were able to get much better rolls than him, more than yes. anything else. Uh, I think uh, there was a point where he didn't roll any damage. Where yeah. he should have killed something, I think. Yeah. So definitely, definitely the dice helped the, a lot. I mean, your Rex um, Labraff, it took a lot of effort for him to get off the table, huh? Yeah. And also, I think my plan was to, seeing how he deployed, my plan was to throw the defender as fast as possible. Yeah. And he called the play, uh, he called the play on turn two, mm -hmm. uh, where he dropped the bomb behind him. And I was expecting to do much more damage. So that I think that's the turn that put me. Uh, right into, I had to climb back yeah. into the game, uh, but aside from that, it was uh, it was very, very close, so actually all of, my all of my games are very, very close. So All your games this today uh, have been pretty close, huh? Yeah. So your MOV is probably a bit, yeah, you're yeah, quite I low out of, out of the, out of the I'm low, I'm low. Out of the undefeateds, before starting the game, you were in ninth place out of 10 undefeated. Oh. So you had uh, yeah. Diego Arabati is, was below you as far as MOV was yeah. concerned, but yeah, pretty like not very strong position to be in. No, uh, but, but now you're on five and zero, oh, so you're definitely into the cut tomorrow. So yes. that's that's the that's so the least that's, of our uh, That's basically that was my objective for today. So that's good. Now Alex is at four and one, uh, and he had a pretty good MOV. So I mean, it's not like he's out at all. Yeah. Uh, he's still got every single opportunity, yeah. and he only has to win one more game to be guaranteed. And it's a pretty healthy cut anyway. I think out of like um, thirty people that are four and two, thirteen or fifteen of them make it through to the cut. Yeah. So it should be pretty. It should be pretty healthy. So maybe I'll have the chance to, to play, play him again. Alex again. <laughs> we'll Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Thank you. Good luck uh, for your next game, yeah. even though it's not so important. And good luck tomorrow. We'll see how yeah. how well you do tomorrow. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.